One section of the Leaving Cert Biology course is all to do with plants. Plant structure in particular is not a favourite of students. So in this video, we'll call it plant structure particulars. This is just to focus your attention on key diagrams and key pieces of information that you should go and revise. There is no way of getting away from plants. And if you spend time just going over this particular chapter and all the associated details, you could get full marks on a very straightforward question. Where to start? We'll start at the easiest part of the whole chapter, labelling the plant diagram. So look at all of the labels in this diagram and the leaf is not marked in, but you know the leaf yourself and be able to label each of those parts. Pay attention to the internode, the axle, the petiole and the node. Then divide the plant into the stem system above ground and the root system below ground. And make a checklist of the functions of the stem followed by the functions of the root. And bear in mind that it's usually the functions of the root which stump students. Don't forget to study the woody stem, how the stem appears particularly in winter. So we start off by looking at the apical bud or the terminal bud at the very top of the twig. If you look at a twig in winter, you'll see that the terminal bud has these protective leaves covering it. These are known as bud scales and these are to protect the bud from the harsh weather in winter. In springtime, each one of those bud scales, those protective leaves, falls off and leaves an individual scar known as a scale scar. All of the scale scars together form the girdle scar. So when you look at the woody stem and you see a girdle scar, you're going to see where there once was a terminal or apical bud and the space between each one of those girdle scars marks one year's growth. Another scar which you'll see on the woody stem is the leaf scar. This is where a petiole once was attaching a leaf and it has fallen off and the remaining scar is the leaf scar. Also visible on the woody stem are axillary or lateral buds. These are found in the axle where the petiole attaches the leaf to the stem. And also those apertures are openings for gas exchange, the lenticels. Through the lenticels, oxygen enters for cellular respiration and carbon dioxide and water vapour exit. The next diagram is the diagram of the root, the LS section, the longitudinal section. And in this diagram, there are lots of labels that you should know, the first of which is fill in the zones. If you study biology at third level, often they leave out or they don't include the zone of protection. But for our exam, we will. The zone of protection found at the root cap and it does what it says. It protects the root as it grows downwards. So just above the zone of protection is the zone of cell production, where we find the meristem. In the meristem, new cells are produced because the meristem is made up of undifferentiated cells that just constantly divide. Above this, we have the zone of cell elongation where some of those newly produced cells will get longer. So just above the zone of cell elongation is the zone of differentiation. This is where those newly produced cells become specialised. They form particular types of cells and it's here that you find the root hairs. And in a previous Leaving Cert question, you were asked to mark in the diagram in what zone is water absorbed. Remember, you could be asked to draw this diagram from scratch and not only to mark in the zones, but to label all of those specific tissues, dermal tissue, ground tissue, vascular tissue made up of the xylem and the phloem. Also mark in the meristem and the root cap. The other root diagram is the TS section or the transverse section. So cutting across the root and looking in. So how would you know that this is a root? Well, first off, the first thing that you notice is that there are no vascular bundles in the root. Look at the arrangement of the xylem and the phloem. And secondly, you have the root hairs. And remember, in every plant diagram, always write in the three types of tissue, dermal, ground and vascular tissue. If you walk away from this revision session knowing how to identify and mark in dermal, ground and vascular tissue on stem and root diagrams, well, you've walked away with probably vital marks in your Leaving Cert. So learn that. So let's move on to the stem diagrams. And there are two transverse sections and one LS section that you need to be able to draw and to label. And it's the usual labels, label dermal, ground and vascular tissue. But before we add in those labels, when you look at the transverse sections of the dicot stem and the monocot stem, if the labels were not there, how would you know which was dicot and which was monocot? Well, we always remember in our class because we say monocots are messy. We don't write messy in our exam, but we just know that in monocots, there's no fixed arrangement of those vascular bundles. They are just scattered throughout the stem. However, there is a fixed arrangement in the dicot stem around around the edge. How would you know that these were stems and not roots? Well, the presence of those vascular bundles. So now add in those labels. Start from the outside and work your way in. Dermal, grand and vascular. Really straightforward and easy marks. 
So finally, before we move away from the TS section, let's have a look at the dicot stem, particularly the vascular tissue. In one question, you were asked to mark in which part of the vascular bundle was the xylem and which was the phloem. Xylem is always towards the centre. It's facing the centre of the stem. Phloem is facing the edge, the outer edge of the stem. So finally, we have the LS section of the dicot stem, the longitudinal section. You have dermal tissue towards the outer edges, ground tissue just inside that and in the centre of it. And then you have finally the vascular tissue made up of the xylem towards the centre and the phloem towards the outer edges. It's always wise to make sure that you can create a table to compare monocots and dicots. What are the key features? So in monocots, they're almost always herbaceous, whereas in dicots, they can be herbaceous or sometimes woody. Monocots have one cotyledon, one seed leaf, whereas dicots have two cotyledons, two seed leaves. In monocots, the flower parts are arranged in units of threes, whereas in dicots, the flower parts are arranged in units of fours or fives. When you look at the leaves of monocots, they have parallel venation, whereas in dicots, they have netted or reticulate venation. The vascular bundles are scattered in the stem of the monocot, whereas in the dicot they're in a fixed arrangement, usually a circular arrangement around the edge of the stem. You cannot study plant structure or plant transport without knowing in detail the vascular tissue. You have to be able to draw xylem tracheids and vessels and label them in detail. The same goes for phloem, the longitudinal section and the transverse section. Be able to identify them both from photographs. It's really important and there is a separate video on this and also your textbook. So spend time on these diagrams because one of them, I bet, would be on your paper. Give an account of how water moves into the root of a plant. Well, firstly, water is absorbed or enters the root by osmosis through those root hair cells and it passes from cell to cell across the ground tissue of the root until it reaches the xylem, the vascular tissue at the centre of the root and from there it's transported upwards through the plant in the xylem. So what shall I cover now? Well, I'm sure you know how to draw and label xylem and phloem. After you know how to do that, go on to the leaf structure. Can you draw and label this diagram? Can you give an account of why the leaf is so well adapted for photosynthesis? Then go on to water transport, particularly the cohesion tension model by Dixon and Jolie. Talk about tact and be able to give an account and a definition of what transpiration is. You could get a question with a graph this year. Finally, a topic which does not take up much space in your book and is often overlooked, food storage in plants. How are plants modified to store food? That onion diagram or the potato could appear on your exam, so too could the carrot. So I would give that topic a, a bit of revision because I expect one of them might be on your exam. The very best of luck. There are lots of other videos. You have your textbook and you should be doing past papers. Best of luck.